In this video, I will cover how to get approved for the A2P phone number in Go High Level on the very first try, so you don't waste yours and your client's time anymore. And I know this whole verification process is a pain in the ass, and so many people are stressing about it, including myself in the past, but not anymore. And I hope this is gonna be the very last video you're ever gonna watch on this whole verification process. And look, my most recent campaign was submitted for review on the 2nd of July, and boom, one day later, it was approved, 3rd of July, same location ID. And look, we want to make this process stress-free and simple, and that's why I built this 14 page SOP that goes in detail and describes everything step by step what we all need to do to get approved. You can also grab this for free, link is in the description. And look, there are only three steps to this verification process. Step number one, we need to get the business information from our client. Step two is compliancy. We want to make sure our client's website is compliant when it comes to collecting people's contact information, like this form and the privacy policy in terms of conditions and everything else that's on the website. And the last third step is the application process. We want to make sure we fill it out the right way. Also, if you are curious about the difference between a local number versus toll-free number, I made this table for you to understand. In short, local number is better, but it's a bit more expensive and the registration process takes longer. My strategy is this. I first get a toll-free number for a new client to start sending text messages and making calls right away. And then if I see if that business is committed to our long-term business relationship, Relationship, then I will transition to a local number. Okay, I don't want to waste anyone's time, so we're going to fly through this document together with you. The first part is collecting businesses' information, and here's an example. What we do next is we need to decide whether we want to do a toll-free number or a regular local number. And then we go here in the settings, and then phone numbers, and then we click add number, add phone number. So here, United States, we click on the filter, and then here is where we can select toll free or local. If you want toll free, unselect local. If you want local, unselect toll free. For example, for locals, we want to like 214, 617, whatever, like uh, the area code, you're gonna put it in there, and then I click apply, and then you can buy that phone number here. So let's just pretend we bought a phone number. We're gonna go to the trust center, and this is where their application happens. But before that application, we need to make sure our website, our contact forms, and our terms and conditions, all those pages are compliant. So we go back to the Word document, we scroll down, and as you can see here, local A2P phone verification SOP. We have three options about the websites. So some clients, they wanna keep their existing website. So we create a form and then we send that code to their tech support and say, hey, can you make those changes on the website? Option number two, we create a website for them because maybe that's the agency you're running. You're running a web design agency. You create it and then you make it compliant and you just connect their domain to go high level. Third option is very unlikely is when they cannot access, modify their website, or it's very troublesome for them. So what we can do is we can buy a different domain, which is similar to their domain, and then we basically duplicate kind of like their website and make it compliant just to get the phone number. But client will still keep their existing old website. And we just got a phone number and then forget about this website and forget about this domain, we just got the phone number, right? For us, it would be most likely 90% of the time it's gonna be number one. And again, like this example uh, client of mine that I got verified in only one day for a local number, they were running this website on a WordPress. So what I did is I created this form and I sent the form code to their tech support and they just basically changed all their forms on their website to go high level forms. And what I also did is I gave them the text that needs to be on their privacy policy and service terms and conditions pages. Also, as you can see here, this line, this is where we also want to include trade name and real business name for compliance reasons. For example, Gripping Digital, my trade name, operating under 12345 Canada Inc. Because we want to have both, we want to make sure that whoever is going through our application and basically checks that all everything checks off, they want they want to see the real business number also included on the website. And in this SOP, there are also uh, terms of service and privacy policy here. And yeah, terms of service and privacy policy. And the highlighted sections are the most important ones for compliancy because they talk about the SMS messaging and phone numbers and kind of like collecting those information from our um visitors to the website, right, from our potential clients. What you will also find in this SOP, just gonna quickly show you, is that if you are in a finance category, like you are a mortgage broker, or you are selling financing, uh, personal financing, or maybe you are a car dealership and you're selling vehicle financing, right? Anything to do with selling loans. So if you are in that special category, there's a special, a separate way of verifying, or like verifying a phone number for that, and it's also in here in this Word document. And if you're looking for the toll-free phone verification, 
There's even a snapshot that you can use and everything again, outlined step by step, everything you need to get verified is here. Okay, let's just go with the local phone number for now. And we're gonna go to go high level and we're gonna create a form. So we're gonna go to sites, forms, and then add a form. Start from scratch, create. So uh, first name, last name, obviously we need that to be required. And then phone number, we will uncheck because that will help with compliancy. Email is required and then those two checkboxes. Because rules have been a little bit more strict lately, we want we need two checkboxes instead of one. Again, we go back to the SOP and then we copy this section over here and then we paste it in the first checkbox over here, paste. And then we go back and then copy second checkbox, boom. Now, what we also want to do is we want to Command A or Control A, select everything, then click those three dots and then remove the links. As you can see, those blue underlines that's because it thinks those are links, but they are not. Those are just custom values and custom fields. And then select again and then remove all the links. Boom. Now, what's going to happen is the location name in the go ahead level settings is going to be it's going to be under business profile and it's going to be friendly business name. So it's just going to auto fill that friendly business name as a location name in the in the form. And then for the legal business name, unfortunately, we only can auto fill it using custom values. So if you go to custom values and you can create it, if you don't already have it and you can name it legal business name. And this is the one that I am using in the form. And then if we click save and we click preview, as you can see here, it auto filled those like location name as a friendly business name. And it auto filled custom uh, custom values legal business name as one two three legal LLC. Again, those everything's just here as an example. What we also want to do is we want to make sure that we have those privacy policy links actually directing to the actual website links. So we click here, we select this, click here, and then link. And this is where we actually want to paste our privacy policy in terms of service. So then how do we share this form to the tech support of our client's website? We click here, integrate, and then it's going to be inline and we just copy embed code. So the code is going to be copied and then you go to Gmail and you send that email to the tech support and you paste it here. And this is what they will use um, to activate and to actually make that form live on the website like this over here. Okay, so after all of that is done, the third step is the application process. And we will be basically following along with the SOP with this Word document and the information provided by the client. So we go back to uh, the grip in the go high level. And we actually instead of the application and in the trust center, we scroll up in the business profile. And then this is where we have to fill it out first, so that it will help us in the application later on. We want to fill out the general information. We want to fill out the business physical address, business information, and authorized representative. It could be either the owner of the business or it could be general manager or a person who is in charge of the marketing. Okay, so I successfully just copy pasted everything that was provided by an example client. And then I filled it all out in here and in there. Now we can go back uh, after clicking all update information, update, update, update. So it is a saved in the system. We go to phone numbers and then we go to trust center and then we click start registration now. There, uh, yes. And then yes, the business I'm registered has a tax ID and then we click continue. And as you can see here, everything is already filled out because it basically uses the information in the business profile that we just entered. And then we click continue, just making sure that everything is still accurate because maybe we made a, an error in the previous step and then we click continue. And this is the authorized representative's contact information, again, provided by our client because we asked for it. And then we click continue. As you can see here, the email needs to be verified of that contact person. So you want to kind of like stay in contact with the representative, maybe on the phone, or, or maybe you just click continue and then you call him up or send him a text message. Hey, like, can you please give me that code? Okay. And after that is done, we uh, should select low volume standard. And then I acknowledge checkbox and then continue. Okay, so in this section, we just want to copy and paste one by one all those use case description, sample message number one, sample message number two in the application here. We obviously need to change the red parts like the website and the legal business name and the business trade name to what the client provided to us. But for now, we'll just copy and paste everything. And after we successfully copied and pasted everything and changed the red parts to what the client provided to us, we make sure everything looks good. And then we click continue. Here again, we go back to the document, scroll a little bit lower, and then copy this part, paste it here, 
and the same for the opt-in message. Again, those red parts, they need to be changed. This is pretty much the end of the application. After we click submit, we just wait a couple of days to get verified. And if we are in the direct lending category, we click previous and then we scroll down. We will have to actually also check this box, which will say related to direct lending or other loan arrangements. And if we are in that category, we scroll down in the document until we see this section and everything will be a little bit different. So we'll have to actually change the form on our website and also the application phrasing as well. And when it comes to the toll-free phone verification process, it's easier, but different. We don't even need to change forms on our client's website, or we don't even need to create a website, separate website with a separate domain, if that's necessary. No, we can even create a subdomain. And again, everything is explained here. And there's also a snapshot with the sample website where there's gonna be a sample form and you can autofill everything and you can connect your subdomain and go through this application, which will basically help you get verified in a couple, like in one to two days. And if you want to learn how to quickly build a sales funnel for yourself and for your clients in only five minutes, you can watch this video over here. Thanks for watching until the end. I hope you found this video valuable. I'm trying to help as many people as possible by making educational videos like this every week. So make sure to be subscribed for more future value like this. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.